So welcome to this session on the Play Cricket scoring app. This is the laptop version. It is a very easy uh, piece of software to use and we use it for the first and second Menston teams. The Crompart teams we use the iPad version. This is installed on both of the laptops that the club has and those are used for first, second and third team games. So you do not need to provide a laptop. We ensure you get the laptop when you're scoring. You need to make sure that you have an ECB sign-in account. So you will need to log on to the Menston Play website. And from there, you will need to create an account. Once you've done that, I can give you the scorer role and you can then start using the scoring software. To start, quite simply, we just click and open the software. I will have to apologise, I do have quite a slow old laptop that I'm using. And the first thing you will need to do is you will need to log in. If you attempt to, to use the continue without login, there's not much you can do. So this is why we need the ECB website account, because this is what we use to log in. So as you can see, we're using my username and we will use my password. Once we are successfully logged in, you will see that your name is presented in the top right hand corner and you will be able to start downloading matches. To download a match from the website, we go to File, Start Match from Fixture. This will bring up the selection window from which we choose the yellow highlighted drop down box, which is called Site. For me, I am a member of the Airedale Wharfdale Junior Cricket League, Menston CC, and the default NV Play. All your games will be on the Menston CC, so you select that. As you can see, it will start downloading all the games that it has a visibility of in the next available week or so. You can adjust if you want um, the dates using these from and to, but typically you will be scoring on the same day. So you will do your fixture from here. I have set up a friendly for us to play. This is Menston Team Texel. This is Menston Team Smith. This is a friendly 20 over game, and we will be using this for scoring practice. If you want, you can do practice games, and I will show you how to do that later. And we can set up some practice games for you to, to play with. Um, all the other games you can see here are actual live games that will be used. So once we've selected our game it is highlighted in blue and we click continue this will download the game from the internet and it will present you with the two teams what should happen but doesn't always happen is that both teams will pre-populate the players that they've got as you can see here both teams have got 10 players but in a, net, in a game we need 11. So what we're going to do is we're going to add an extra player to each team. This is the same process whether you have no players in, one player, 10 players. It's the exact same process. You just keep repeating it. So what I'm going to do is on the left-hand side, I'm going to go in and click the Add Player button. 
This will bring up the Add Player panel, as you can see. This has two tabs, Existing Player and Create New Player. Hopefully, the player that you are after already plays Menston Cricket. So they will exist within this list, and you can select them directly from the list by selecting them. So here we'll select Alistair Adams, or you can go to name and type in a part of their name. And as you will see, it will slowly reduce down to those available based upon what you've put into the name and you select the person. Once you've selected the person, the add button becomes available. The close button, if you press that, you will just be taken back out with no changes made in the same way that if you press the X in the top corner. So we have selected Maxim Baker to play this game and we will add him in. So we simply click add. And as you can see on the left hand side in the pane behind, Maxim Baker has been added. If we select more players from this list, they will be added into that team that we are currently uh, updating. As you saw there, if you hover over an account, it will show you the details of the person. If that happens, you can simply come off of it by moving your mouse around again. So now we've added to that team, we will close and we will move over to the other team and we will add a player. Okay, this time we're going to pick a player who doesn't actually show in the list. So we will create a new player. <coughs> this new player, we will name Martin. Baker and we will click once we've created the account with his first name that and second name that's all we need to really add we will click save and you will now see that Martin Baker has now joined the opposition team again if we want to add more new players we would click the new button add in the new details of the player as you can see here or you can go back click the existing players and select more people from the list like you did the first time once you are happy you can close out using the X or the close button and you are brought back to the main screen if an item has a star in it which you can see here a red star those are compulsory items they must be filled before the start scoring option is available down here the only ones you're really going to have to worry about are the captain and the wicket keepers for both teams if those aren't filled everything else should be automatically populated if you want but you don't have to you can fill the scorer and the umpires but those aren't compulsory for what we're doing mm -hmm. if you see a mistake and you see a player in the team that shouldn't be and need to be replaced they can be removed or replaced the easiest way to do that is to select the person so we will select here Billy Craig and now we can remove or replace because those buttons are highlighted we will simply replace so we click the replace button and we're back into the same panel that we were in before. This time we will select somebody else and we will add them in. And as you can see, that player has been removed and replaced with Jeffrey Barker. If you click the remove button instead, which I'm not going to do, you would simply remove and then add player. So now we've got both our teams populated, we can begin scoring. From the scoring drop down, there are three options. There are start live scorer, start as support scorer and start as local scorer. If you are the home team and you are playing at Menston, you will be the live scorer. The live scorer 
is the person who's scoring for the home team. The support scorer is the person support scoring for the away team. If you choose a support scorer and they have internet access, the system will ask you to match your details at the end of each over. If for any reason you don't have internet access when you are at the away game, you will find that you want to start as local. So local will use the local copy of the game and allow you to score without in internet access. If you then get internet access, you can then upload those details later. It is possible to change from one method of scoring to the other during the game. Should someone's laptop break, you can change and become the live scorer if necessary, or the support scorer or local scorer can take over live scoring for you. The save and start later button allows you to pre-fill this information, save it, close down the match, and then reopen it again from the start fixture which we did before <clears throat> but what we're going to do now is we're going to start scoring so we press the button to start the scoring as the live scorer This will bring us through to the main screen. This is the screen you're going to use the most. What um, you can find is sometimes this, this gets um, changed by different people. They remove certain boxes, which can be done with the X's, um, and it can change the slide format. If that happens, you can go into the configuration and change the default which is i believe under view so under view you can reset to the default layout this is the default layout any pertinent buttons that you need to press next or are only able to press next are usually highlighted with the yellow highlight as you can see here it is record toss so that is all we can do within this game at the moment we are in a play state of pre toss so we will obviously attend the toss and we will find out what happens so it will list both teams we will confirm that team Texel and they've elected to bowl. We can create the first innings or we can save without creating the first innings and then create the first innings afterwards. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to leave that unticked and click save. And all that's happened is, is we then have to go through the next step of creating the innings. So we click create innings. And the system will default the strike batsman, the non-strike batsman, and the bowler. However, that may not obviously be the players that are going to be. It simply takes them from the existing list of people that were in the squads. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to go through and change all of these to who we think are meant to be the right people before we start the game. As you can see... Christian is the opener, but we are going to make it Jeffrey. We are going to make the non-striker Cameron Scott. And we are going to make the first bowler Alex Texel. As you can see, the yellow highlight is removed from these players. And the only one left is start play. If... We have put these players in the wrong way round. 
we can either go back through and change the box or we can swap the batters using this button here or we can edit the batting order and move people up and down so for instance here we will take Ben Smith as a bowler and put him further down the order we will move James Lowens further down the order and we will move Peter up the order once we are happy with the batting order we can close that off but as I said it's not critical because at the end of the day you can just change who's going to bat from the drop down list now we're happy with our batters our bowlers we start the game click the start play and choose an end this doesn't really make a difference at all um, I always choose north you can choose south doesn't really make a difference so now you can see it's got quite busy the scoring buttons which are in the scoring panel are now available for us to use the first result is ready to go as you can see we're starting with Jeffrey receiving a ball from Alex and we can see a copy of the scoreboard and then we can see the scorecard so we'll start simply with a dot ball which is a zero as you can see it's recorded the ball in the over it has increased Jeff's count over here it's updated the scorecard and the scoreboard and as you can see in this over it is recorded dot ball and given Jeff one dot so quite a lot has gone on just by pressing one simple button we will continue through the over just by pressing and when we get to the last ball it will ask us do we want to end the over if for some reason the umpires have miscounted which they've done this over and they want to do another ball you would say no and click no and it will allow you to record the next ball so this will say the next ball is a dot and it will ask you again do you want to end the over this time we will say yes but if the umpires again have miscalculated and want to do another ball you can say no and it will continue to do that every time you do a new ball so we will say yes and we will now choose our bowler for the next over so this time we're going to select Frankie and Frankie becomes the new bowler and as you can see Alex and Frankie are now showed up on the scoreboard and we score as normal with all of the scoring I'm going to move my mouse out of the way you can do it one of two ways you can click on the buttons as we've been doing there or you can use the numbers of the keyboard one through to six which I'm going to do and zero which I'm going to do now so I'm going to press obviously you can't see it the one I'm going to press four I'm going to press zero twice to do dot ball this is an easier way to do it but it's entirely up to you you can press the buttons if you want I just prefer to use the keyboard we will finish this over and we will continue as you can see it's fairly straightforward if they run a four rather than hitting a four you can choose from the drop down next to the four if it's a four all run or a four boundary 
by default using the button or using the keyboard for the four and the six will default to it being a boundary. If you want to score outside of what has already been done or is available upon the runs, you can do a selection from the drop down box. As we know, it's very rare that someone's going to run seven or eight. They may run a, I've never seen anyone run a five, but they could run a five. Penalties can be applied for hitting helmets, uh, other infringements by clicking the blue penalty button. You will select the penalty that is given. And we will choose this one. You can up or lower the penalties that are awarded. And you can choose whether it's given to the current ball by pressing and ticking the add to the previous ball or not. So what we will do is we will add it to the previous one. And as you can see in the notes, we have given the five penalties. And as you can see in the ball by ball, it lists the five penalties. And obviously the five penalties do not count towards each batsman or bowler. So we will finish this over. <coughs> As you can see, it continues to pick the two bowlers until you change it. So it always assumes that you are using the same bowlers until you adjust it or until you get to the end of their allocation, at which time you are forced to change. Now we've done legitimate runs, we will now just look at the options that are available to us for the extras. As you can see, we have wides, buys, leg buys and then three options for no balls the reason we have three options for no balls is if you hit a wide it's no longer a wide and if you run on a wide it becomes two wides whereas on a no ball if you run on a no ball without hitting it it is a buy if it hits your body it becomes a no ball with a leg by and then obviously you can hit runs off of a no ball and those are attributed to you. So what we're going to do here is we are going to give one wide. So we click the W. And as we can see, the wide shows as a W up here and as a wide to Cameron down in the ball by ball. And you will see that we haven't increased our count of balls. We can do two wides by clicking the plus two. And as you can see, it shows wide plus two. So that's three runs were given to the team. It's shown as wide plus two. And we will do a wide plus one. Which should take us up to 39. And again, for any crazy reasons, there is the option to go up to 9. Which is highly unlikely, but you never know. We'll just finish this over off. As you can see, because we've had three wides, we still need to deliver six new legitimate deliveries. And when we do that, the end of the over is confirmed. This time, we will do buys. In the same way as you do wides, the buys show here. And again, if you want more than four buys, they are shown on the drop down for the four. We will give four buys in this situation. As you can see, the extras are shown here with four buys. Because buys obviously are legitimate deliveries. It's increased the number of balls. This time we will do two leg buys after our dot ball. And you can now see it says two leg buys. 
Finally, we will do no balls. So we will do a no ball that scores no runs. So that is the only zero in the no ball options, which is here. As you can see on all the rest, they are one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. But on the last one for runs, this is where we do a no ball that nobody runs on. Again, that shows one no ball in the extra and no runs. Let's say they hit it and run two. We have a no ball plus the two runs. And as you can see at the top, we've hit 50 for the team. And that is also put into the notes here. So we will continue and end the over. And this time we will do a no ball with leg buys. So we'll say they, they ran one off the no ball. So we click the one for the no ball. As you can see, we now have a one no ball plus one LB for leg buys. The score has obviously gone up by two. And that is how we do our extras. The system will automatically calculate how many balls are remaining. It will also calculate if the batsmen have crossed over. But as you can see, it's a very simple strategy. There's not much to do, and most of your time will be spent simply doing, hopefully, ones, twos, and fours, and not many wides or leg buys. So what we're going to do now is we finish the over. Alex has done three, so we're going to bring in a new bowler. So what we can do is we simply choose the new bowler, and we will go with Ethan Lowens. Ethan is now on... And ready, he shows up here in the scoreboard. He shows over in the bowler section on the scorecard and obviously within the play control. Now we will move into wickets. The easiest wickets, obviously, are going to be bold and LBs to record. So we'll start with one of those. So you can click on wicket or you can choose wicket from the drop down doesn't make a difference here we have chosen Jeffrey and Jeffrey has been clean bold because Jeffrey has been clean bold all of the other options we have available to us have now been disabled and we simply click OK now that Jeffrey is out the new bowler comes in None that it's ever happened, you can actually time out the new batsman, but typically you are just going to choose the next batsman. As we adjusted our batting order, we'll simply just take the next person that it offers to us and we'll click OK. So now Peter will come in. We'll let Peter get a couple of runs. End the over. And we have another wicket. This time we will have an LBW. Again, as before, everything is greyed out and we just click OK. And now we pick the next bowler. No, sorry, the next batsman. We will allow him to get a few more runs. We'll throw in a wide We'll throw in a couple of L uh, buys and end the over. This time, they were caught. So we click wicket. The default option is caught. We choose the primary fielder. We will give this to the wicket keeper. As you can see, he has a plus to show he's the wicket keeper. 
and we can choose the fielding position. But because William is the wicketkeeper, by default, it will set the fielding position to wicketkeeper because we've specified it. If we want, we can have an assistant fielder. So in an example, the ball is hit to the boundary. The fielder jumps in the air over the boundary in the air, knocks it back. And it's caught by William. Then if we want, we can attribute the ass assistant fielder by selecting someone from the drop down box. Otherwise, we can leave it blank in most cases. Again, we click OK. And the new batsman comes in. And this is pretty much all we are going to do whilst the normal game is going on. As we can see here, Frankie has exceeded his number of overs that he can do. So we are forced to pick a new bowler and we will pick Maxim. Next, we will do a trickier wicket. So this time, we will do a run out. But it wasn't the on strike who was run out. It was the assistant. Sorry, the non striker. So we have to change the player to the non striker. And confirm the primary fielder as this is starred in red and we will choose Charlie Pullian again if we want we can add an assistant in and if known we can choose his fielding position but you don't have to worry about the fielding position very rarely do anybody finish it and then we can end the ball or if we take that off which I'm going to do in this option and click OK we can add um, the fact that they ran for two and he got caught coming back and we can add the ball in and we will choose now the new batsman Okay, now we will continue to do our scoring. But what's this that's happened? Oh dear, we've made a mistake. We've put three when it was a two. When you make a mistake in the over, the easiest option especially if it was the ball that you've just done, is to press the back button, which is this button here, which is a circle going counterclockwise with an arrow on it. And we can go back and delete the previous ball. Do we want to delete it? Yes, we do. As you can see, it's removed it. It's taken the balls back. It's reset everything, and we can adjust it again. However... If we spot a mistake further back, such as in the 10th over, when Cameron Scott, we've put him down as three runs, but only scored uh, two, we don't want to have to go back and remember what was in this over. We can edit the individual ball. So to do that, we click on the ball, and we click the Edit button, and we adjust it to whatever we want it to be. In this case, we're going to do two, but it could be a wide, it could be buys. And then having done that, it will tell us what the impact of that is. If you choose to continue without autocorrect, it will leave everyone where they are. It will just reduce 
the number of balls uh, sorry the number of runs to that player and the number of runs to the score however if we do auto correct it will adjust for the fact that the batters have moved round and that everything has changed so that everything should be correct and then when we are happy we can click the edit button again as you can see it's no longer yellow and we are back to our position before and we can carry on do i wish to finish the over i do Right, so we've had another wicket. This time we have a stumping. Again, because it's a stumping, it will automatically be chosen to be done by the wicket keeper. And so it pre fills everything, and we can't adjust anything. We will click OK to finish and choose the next batsman and we will end the over right. so we are almost at a position where the game is over there's another seven overs to go this time we are going to do a run out and we are going to do this whilst they were going back for the third. So I'm going to just move them on a bit into the over and I am going to say that Scott Medley was run out attempting the third run and as such this is how i would record it you don't have to do it this way um there are, there's multiple ways you can do it you could put in the two and then do the wicket but i tend to do it this way which is i would go wicket choose that it's scott run out as you can see because i've changed it it's automatically assumed run out I would then go untick the end ball like I did previously. Choose who got it. So we're going to say that Alex Texel got it. And this time I'm going to say he was assisted by the wicket keeper. So having done that, I will then choose the two, which means that Cameron Scott should be back on strike. They are awarded the two runs and Medley is confirmed out and the new batsman James Lowens comes in. As we can see, the wicket, if we scroll across, is run out and Cameron Scott gets the two runs he's awarded and he stays on strike. That is generally how I would do, do a run out. I think it's the simplest way to do it. What we can also do is um, realise we've made a mistake. Oh dear. What was the mistake we made? The mistake we made is that James Lowens wasn't the batsman to come in. It was somebody else. So what we can do is we can choose to go back and restart back to the wicket which is a pain we can edit the balls for which James did again which is a pain the easiest thing is to just replace the player so what we can do is we go to the striker and we choose the next batsman and we will say replace James Lowens with Andy for the inning if we say yes, everything that James has scored 
every ball that James has received will be given to Andy. If we say no, it will assume it is a retirement for an injury. So we will say yes this time. And you will see that Andy has replaced him. And we continue on as normal. And as you can see in the previous over, where it said James, it shows Andy. If we replace Cameron with Ben because he was injured, we will say no. And we have the options of retired out or retired not out. The difference between retired out and retired not out is the retired out, I believe, will give you seven wickets. The retired not out will not increase the wicket count and that player can come back in. So we will say he's retired, injured, so retired not out. His retirement is notified and updated and Ben has come in and we can carry on scoring. And we will end the over. If it gets a bit weathery, which is known to happen in this country, and there is a delay, we can change the state of play to cover those delays. So what we're going to do here is, if you see the state of play is currently in play, and we want to change it, to a rain delay we change to rain and we go off have our break as long as it continues to rain and then we come back and we click the start play button again to put ourselves back in play And we are lucky that this rain delay was too small to lose overs. But what happens if it rains and we need to adjust the overs? So again, we go off for rain. So we change the state to rain. We can go up to here and find out that actually we're going to lose a few overs we go to scoring revised totals here under revised overs target and dls we click on this button and we click add and we say right we've lost two overs now so we will click and bring it down to two overs and click OK. And as you can see, the number of remaining overs has reduced. And we are playing 18 overs for both sides. Once the rain is finished, we just press the start button and off we go again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take us up to the interval. Which is just a couple of overs away. So we now choose our new bowler. And in this situation, David has injured himself. So we need to replace David and finish the over, which has only got one ball left in it. So again, as we did with the batsman, we can go up to the bowler and select a new bowler. 
Obviously, we can't choose a bowler who's already exceeded his, his over rate. If we do, it will complain. But we can choose a new bowler. And we get the same message as we got with the batsman. Have we made a mistake? And it should have been Alex instead of David. And we want to replace him. We would say yes. If we do that, then as has happened with the batsman, all of the balls that have been delivered by David would be assigned to Alex. However, we are going to say no. And as you can see, Dave Holder has only bowled 0 0.5 because he's been injured. And any more balls in the over will be attributed to Tune. We have now finished. We have 18 overs. Would we like to end the innings? The answer is always going to be yes. Unless there's been a mistake. And obviously there's more balls that they want us to deliver. As per the previous example with the overs. So you will say yes at this situation. You will then be asked how long before play resumes. You don't have to fill this in. You can just save it. Or if you know it's going to be in 20 minutes, you can put 20 minutes in. It's entirely up to you. I just generally would leave it blank. So let's just clear that out and save it. And you are now complete. I believe this is a good time for us to take our break now. So if you all want to take 10 minutes, we'll come back at five past and continue with the training then. OK. OK. During the break, there are a number of requirements of the scorers in line with the home team scoring in the Airedale Wolfdale Cricket League. We have to print out a copy of the scorecard and of the DLS sheets. The DLS is used to work out in a reduced over game the target for the team batting second. This was done to make it fairer. Before DLS was introduced, then we only had the option of the team batting second with reduced overs drawing the game or losing. DLS obviously removes that and if you're ahead of the DLS you win, if you're behind the DLS you are the losers unfortunately. The four copies that we print out, two copies are given to the umpires and two to the captain so that they are aware of that. This is how you print those copies out you go to scoring choose revised overs target dls and this will look familiar from previously you go down into this bottom corner in the left hand side where it says dls par table you click on that and it lists out the dls Ensure that in the top corner it is ticked and leave everything else alone. Do not print this first page. This is a ball by ball and it will be several pages long. Instead, you need to come down and click the over by over option. As you can see, it is a much shorter screen. And then you need to simply click on print. Choose your default printer, which will be the printer in the scoreboard. However, for this example, I'm going to print to PDF. Choose the number of copies, in this case four, and then print. Okay, that's only because... We're doing the PDF version. Obviously, with the normal printer, it would print so many copies. DLS test and save it. 
and then once it is printed you can simply click OK to come out or the X in the top come out of the next pane with the X or the OK again and you're back to your position before what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to minimize this and I'm going to bring over the example sheet and just show you this as as to what I expect the printout to look like as you can see it's one page we will have four copies as I mentioned if we did it ball by ball in a 40 over game you can imagine it would be several pages so each copy is given to the umpires and to the captain but we also have to print out a copy of the scorecard to print out a copy of the scorecard we go to statistics match scorecard and again down print print two copies is the league requirement however before the game starts I always ask them do you really want two copies and they usually say no we print one so again you would print I'm not going to print in this example I'm just going to cancel and then once you've printed it you close again and you're back to the beginning and now you have your T and you come back once you've come back and you're ready to go you simply click on the new innings button and the game will start again because we revised the overs in this game it's asking us well, it's informing us of that and the update to the DLS. So in this situation, you would close it. Or if, again, there was rain during the interval and you needed to edit it, you would edit it. But we are going to do that later in this example. So you would close this. So in 90% of the games that you score, that warning will not come up. And you will simply be back here where you will be expected to pick again your opening batsman your non-striker and your bowlers again if you so choose you can edit on the batting order and change the batting order or you can select them from the list we are going to leave it as it is we are happy that uh, martin baker this time rather than maxim baker is going to start and we start the game again so we will confirm that the batsmen are the two batsmen that we've got. And the game will start in the same way, north or south. Doesn't make a difference. And confirm the first bowler. And we are back into the game. So what I'm going to do... So I'm just going to fill up a few of the overs and then we are going to reduce the game in Duckworth Lewis. So again, we're in the situation where there is another break this time we'll have a break for drinks so again we'll wait till the end of the over we will end the over and the call is drinks so we simply go up click drinks and the game is suspended whilst we go for drinks once drinks are complete we can start the game again but before we do i will just bring up the the list to show you what else we can stop for so we can stop for tea we can stop for lunch obviously this uh, application is not just used um, for limited overs 
it can be used for professional tests and everything so it's used by everybody and it is free which is even better we can if we choose change it to in play which we'll do this time and it's started play again so that's the second way of doing it and it's automatically started so we can click on this button and start play or we can just change the state so we will continue with these two going along well they're already up to 50 and again it's typical English weather and it's another delay for rain so this time we will delay it for rain